If you're in the United States, you're almost certainly familiar with the Amber Alert system, which is designed to help citizens get involved when a child has been abducted. And so it sends out these alerts to people's different phones and sometimes like highway signs and everything, letting people know to look out for a certain license plate or whatever. And the community tries to come together to find this child. Well, now that's not enough. Apparently the system is kind of racist. We'll get to it in a minute. But California has passed a law to fix it all, as California likes to do. So now they've come out with the Ebony Alert system. I, I wish I was joking. It sounds like a parody, um, but it's not. No, nope, they, they did that. So the Ebony Alert system, like it sounds like if this is the way that you think, um, <laughs> is for missing um, black children, young adults, and apparently also disabled people. Um, but basically it's the black alert system that the, the black person is missing. Um, yeah, because some people have criticized the, alarm, the Amber Alert system that is used across different race, races and ethnic groups, saying that it overlooks missing children who are black. And we'll look at their rationale in a moment. So basically, you're going to have the Amber Alert system, which presumably will still, you know, show the cases of a black individual who's missing, because that's a nationwide system, and also the Amber Alert for when a black child specifically is missing. Let's get to the article, okay? Because I, I it's difficult to cover this, and I, I want I don't want to take them out of context. We'll, we'll look at their own arguments, if they can be called that. So here we are at CBS News. <laughs> what is an ebony, an ebony alert? California law aims to confront the crisis of missing black children and young people. All right, I want to scroll down here because there's a lot of sort of like bloviating about this. But here we go. At least 39% of children reported missing in the United States in 2022 were black, according to the Black and Missing Foundation, which said 153,374 children of color were still missing across the country as of October 11th. That figure included people younger than 18 who are African American, Asian, and Indian. Now hold on. <laughs> hold on a second. Because we went from the ebony the ebony alert system for blacks who are missing to very quickly oh look it's everybody who's not white it's the not white preferential alert system that's how quickly it went you know i, I was i looked at the original title of this article and i was i was gonna make the point that eventually it would become just the non-white alert system because they essentially have um, a higher societal privilege in the society that we're sort of creating, but it's already there. It's in the it's in it's, it's acknowledged basically that in our like leftist woke mantra, there are basically two racial groups. There's like white and everybody else, and or as they call it, people of color. But you know, and in the everybody else group, they should get all the different you know perks and priorities and privileges and so on, and then whites should basically suffer and be ignored. And the rationale for that is that white people are in some way oppressive, but despite being oppressive, they're also the rate, like, they kill themselves at higher rates, they don't get into university as easily, uh, something as, as blacks, and so on. But, you know, facts be damned kind of thing. But let's go ahead and move on, because it, it gets more interesting than this. It says, a lot of minority children are, are initially classified as runaways, and as a result, do not receive the Amber Alert, according to that foundation website. Um, while missing minority adults are labelled as associated with criminal involvement, gangs, and drugs. Now, it, it, I think it's easy to get sort of swept up in the politics of this, as opposed to uh, the truth. So, a lot of minority children are initially cl classified as runaways. Um, and the Amber Alert doesn't cover runaways, it covers those who are actually, you know, I guess they are more actively in danger, who've been abducted and so on. Um, but that doesn't mean that the Amber Alert is discriminating against black children who are runaways, merely that it doesn't cover runaways, black or white or any other racial or ethnic group. So 
the fact that black children are disproportionately likely to run away from home is more indicative of a problem with black families and households, which granted there is, as you can see in the rates of, you know, single parenthood in the black community, which is, which is tragic, which has massive consequences later in life. But regardless, when you just make the claim that, well, you know, as you, as, you, as you have it again, you know, a lot of minority children are initially classified as runaways and don't receive the, the Amber Alert. Well, it's like, okay, but that's not the Amber Alert being racist. That's them specifically choosing uh, high risk children to try and, you know, get back and organize community support to return. Um, the fact that there's a disparity in rates of runaway is not indicative of some kind of oppression from society. That's that's a leap. And then you've got the second half there where it says while minority adults are labeled as associated with criminal involvement, uh, gangs and drugs. Okay. I is that false? Because th that's important, right? The truth is important here. If they're being labeled for criminal involvement with gangs and drugs and so on, and it's false, then yeah, that's really kind of wicked. And I I'm with you on, on saying that we should fix that, obviously. But if it's true that they do have criminal involvement and they are into uh, gangs and they are like dealing drugs or what have you, then that's kind of relevant uh, to their disappearance. And, and, and it matters. Their, their argument here is that the statistical, the way the statistics break down is in some way indicative of racial animus on behalf of the Amber Alert system, and that's not what the data shows at all. But I did notice also in that second quote that we have switched, of course, from blacks to simply minorities again, because this Amber Alert system, or sorry, Ebony Alert system, is just the non-white alert system. They just... I guess they, they didn't have a color to, to use for it, so they, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. All right, let's scroll down here. Okay, so we've got a quote before I read it. Let's just, it's by uh, this is state senator, Stephen Bradford, um, this Democrat, obviously. It says, Our black children and young women are disproportionately represented on the list of missing persons. This is heartbreaking and painful for so many families and a public crisis for our entire state. The ebony, the ebony alert can change this. Um, how? And I, I ask this because if they're already disproportionately represented on the list, that means that they are listed, which means they are not actually being just ignored. And so I'm not sure exactly how he presumes that it will be helpful if they're also on another list. Like, because th there's this sort of like false dichotomy that he's making here that doesn't really make sense. It's like, well, um, if they're disproportionately listed, listed, there are lots of, you know, reasons that could be. And we've gone over some of them, you know, like the, the proclivity toward broken homes and single parent homes, which is also, you know, a broken home. Um, and so on, and you have these different communities where you do have a lot of drug use, where you do have uh, the the support of a certain type of lifestyle that is negative and destructive, right? All, all these things are true, but as he admits, um, they're being listed, which means that we are actually looking in the cases that, that meet the criteria for an Amber Alert system, whereas I suppose the Ebony, Ebony Alert system does not have the same criteria, so they can be a runaway, for example, and still listed the same. Well, okay, but then I have to say, does that mean that white kids don't matter? That white runaways don't matter? Um, it would kind of seem so, because if you wanted to just fix the fact that runaways weren't counted, well, then wouldn't you just do a runaway alert system? But that's not what we're doing. Instead, we're doing it specifically for uh, for non-whites. I was going to say for blacks, but that's not actually accurate as we have already seen. So that's a system that is being rolled out with, you know, taxpayer funding. And of course you have the law enforcement agencies in California, I think through the Highway Patrol, uh, reporting into this system that is remarkably anti-white um, in all the different ways that I just listed. And which of course, will 
spur up further racial division, especially down the line. I, I really do think a lot about the fact that you have, like, the white kids of this age are being raised to be being told that essentially they are a lower class, right? that, their, that their lives mean less, that they, uh, due to some kind of historical um, oppression, real or imagined, um, that they will always have a, a lower status in society, a kind of dimmy status, to use a, a Muslim term. Um, and that's going to result in further resentment, further racial animus, and so on. So I, I'm not sure like where those on the left think they're going with this, but it's it's certainly not going to help really anyone. And if you do have a, a list that is encouraging things that the Amber Alert system wasn't encouraging, well, you have to ask you the question of why wasn't the Amber Alert, Amber Alert placing these cases on its list, say, like runaways? Well, because they're trying to prioritize cases you know, that have to be solved immediately, such as an abduction, you know, the first 24 hours is super significant. You can't just flood the system anytime there's there's a child runaway. Um, you can't. It's a, it's a strategic decision that that is based upon reason, not based upon, you know, hatred towards the child runaway. And so if you've got an ebony alert system that goes off every time there is one of these cases that didn't match the amber alert system, well, what's that going to results in other than burnout on behalf of the people who constantly get uh, all of these alerts. Yeah, it, it's, it's the entire system is broken, but it's all about pandering, right? Because a system like this that has no seeming basis in reason and certainly not in morality is there to appeal to those who they think will vote for them uh, this, while doing serious societal damage. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.